Hi, this is SI Worksheet 2. <clears throat> We're going to look at some KCL and some KVL and also review some of the concepts from Chapter 1. And we're going to start with this first problem. Uh, it's a Chapter 1 problem. And a 10 kilo ohm resistor has a power rating of 1 8 watt. Find the maximum voltage that can be applied to this resistor. OK, so there are a number of formulas for power. The only one I ever remember, just because I have a hard time memorizing things, is P equals IV. And then I use Ohm's law to get it into whatever form that I need. So this problem has a resistor, so I'll need a form that has R in it. And I know that V equals IR. And let's see, so we have the power, that's the power, and we have the resistance right there. So I want to eliminate the current. Current equals V over R. So then I'll plug that in for current, and I get power equals V squared over R. Um, and I'm looking for voltage, so multiply both sides by R. PR equals V squared, or V equals the square root of PR. Now I can plug in. <coughs> power is 1 8 and resistance is 10 kilo ohms, so that's 10 times 10 to the third. Now, uh, I'm going to show y'all, and I'm going to repeat this several times. This is my favorite calculator, um, and if you get one, you will be very happy that you do. In America, it's the TI-36 X-Pro. And it just does all kinds of nice things. It solves quadratic equations. It solves systems of equations. And later on this semester, when you get into circuits two and power, it just deals with complex numbers beautifully. And just trust me when I say you will want it. Um, OK, so we needed to find the square root of 1 8 times 10 to the 10 times 10 to the third 25 square root 2 that doesn't help us let's get it like that okay so that's 35.4 volts and that's our answer Okay, moving on to problem two. Um, in this figure, we are given the values of I2 and I3, and we're supposed to find I4, I1, and I4. And here we'll use KCL. And the way I do KCL is currents in, currents in have to equal currents out. And you identify your nodes. So the nodes are already identified here for us. If they weren't, you would have to find them. And at each node, the currents in have to equal the currents out. So uh, I'm going to start with node B. And the currents in are 0. And the currents out are I1 plus I2. I1 is an unknown. I2 is negative 2. Don't worry about the fact that it's negative. You can have negative currents. It just means that uh, in reality the current is going the other direction. But we have I2 labeled as going to the right. And I2 labeled as going to the right has a negative value. So this tells us that I1 equals 2 amps. OK, so um, now let's look at node A. And I'm just picking these. Uh, I picked B because it only had two currents, and I knew one of them. So now I'll look at node A. Let's see if actually that'll help us at all. Yeah, because we need I4. 
Okay, so notice I4 goes through element 4, uh, but it's all in series, and so everything in series has to have the same current, and so I4 is the same as right here. So we have I4 there, and notice I3 is going in the other direction. And are you here for circuits? Yeah, I'm okay. looking for, I had trouble finding them. Yeah, okay. So now we're going to take a look at node A, and just stop me uh, if you have any questions. So uh, node A, we have current I4, and I4 um, has to go all the way around to node A because there's nowhere else for it to go. So everything in series has the same current. And the same with I3, we know it's going into C, and even though it's going through element C, it still it has to have the same current everywhere. Things in series all have the same current. And these are just labeled as elements. They could be uh, resistors, they could be you know, other things. It's just the problem, the book I got these from just had them labeled like that, but you right. can think of them as resistors. Right. Okay, so at node A, oh, and then I1 is going in. So just in terms of I1, I3, and I4, what equation can I write for node A? It would be I1 plus I4 equals I3. I1 plus I4 equals I3. And then we know, we don't know, we know I1. We yep. know I3. We know I3. Okay, so 2 plus I4 equals 5 or I4 equals 3 amps. I am terrible with math, so I always have to. I mean, you'd think I could subtract 5 and 2. Mm -hmm. mm, not so sure. Okay, so I4 equals 3 amps. Don't forget to put your units. Oh, right. Okay, so uh, we found I1 and I4. So we could do another equation at node C, but uh, we don't need to. Of course, right. Yeah. So, um, and the thing is, that's also going to be true with loops. You're almost always going to have one more loop than you need. Right. But if you want to check yourself, it's a good way to check yourself, like assuming you have extra time on a test. All right. So at node C, we should have that I2 is going in plus I3 is going in has to equal I4 going out. I2 is negative 2. I3 is 5. And we said I4 was 3, and so it does work. Right. All right. So now, uh, for this one, uh, we're supposed to identify the nodes in at least two loops, and the book I got this from already had uh, the nodes identified. So take a look for this at, a, at this for a second and see if you agree that those nodes are identified correctly. Uh, yeah. Yep. All right, so um, now we're going to look for some loops, and you can't really go wrong with a loop. As, well, I'm sure you can, mm -hmm. but but there are you know there's lots of different kinds of loops. So like, here's a loop, here's a loop, and here's a loop. And so there's no rules as to you know can you have things branching off of it or not. Um, it doesn't you know all of those all of those are perfectly good. So I am going to give those names. Usually I don't name them. Usually I just draw them, but since we're still at the beginning here, I will give them names. So I'm going to call this this loop right there, I'll just call that 3, 4, 2, because it's going through 3, right. three 4, 2. And I'll call this one 1, 2. Oops. And we'll see if we need to go back and get the other one. Right now, I'm suspecting we only need two loops. So identify any elements connected in series or parallel. So tell me if you see anything that's in series. Uh, three and four. Three and four. Do you see anything that's in parallel? Three and four is in parallel. To together is in parallel with two or one and two. Good. Okay, so one and two are in parallel and 3 plus 4 is in parallel with 2. Uh, and then if we did it like that, that's also in parallel with 1. Oh, right. Yeah, so you could do it like that, yeah. 
Okay, uh, write KCL and KVL equations for the circuit. So uh, let's start with node A and write the KCL. So for node A, it's uh, I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals zero. Mm -hmm. And node B? Uh, just I4. Oh, wait. No, it would be I3 equals I4. Mm -hmm. And node C? Uh, I2 plus I4 equals zero. Almost. We got I2 and we got I4. Oh, and I1. Plus I1 equals zero. Okay, so now I'll do the loops. Um, I'll start with this one, two loop. And um, the direction, if, if your element is not labeled, then the direction that the current is going in, you're going to call that positive. So I'm going to look at this, this loop right here, and I'm going to say since I'm going in my loop, I'm going in the direction of the current, I'll call that a positive V2. Um, but when I go to 1, I'm going opposite the direction of the current, so I'll call that minus V1 equals 0. And we can label these elements since they're not labeled. You can label the side the current is going into as positive and the other side as negative. And then when you're doing KVL, you can say, if you're going into the positive side, you use plus, and if you're going into the negative side, you'd use negative. So now I'll do this 3, 4, 2 loop. So that'd be plus V3, plus V4, minus V2 equals zero. And I'll go ahead and do the whole outside loop. So I give us plus V3, plus V4, minus V1 equals zero. Okay. You see where those yep. are coming from? Yep. All right. Okay, so for this one, uh, I think that's the same circuit we just had. Yeah. Uh, we have I2 is negative 10 milliamps, I4 is 20 milliamps, find I1 and I3. Um, and there's, I was going to say there's no wrong way to do these, but yeah, there's lots of wrong ways. But there's also lots of right ways to do them as right. well. So, um, and no matter what, I write out solutions, and I usually have, like, official solutions, and then I end up doing something different when <laughs> right, I'm doing an yeah. SI, and then I make a mistake or whatever. So do you have any way that you would like to start this? And, again, I don't think you're going to have a wrong way to start it. We could do the uh, KCL. Okay, and at which node do you want to do that? We could start with A. Okay, so we had that equation just a minute ago. I think we said... I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals 0? Right. Okay. So um, we know that I2 is negative 10 milliamps. So I1 minus 10 plus I3 equals 0. All right. So not done yet. All right. And then I4 and I3 are equal and node uh, B. And we got that I3 equaled I4. Um, yeah. And so I3 is, that's a nice three. I3 is 20 milliamps. So then plugging that in up here, I1 minus 10 plus 20 equals 0. I1 equals 10. negative 10. Oh, negative. Negative 10 milliamps. At least that's what I have. Written. Oh no! Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would. I, I didn't. Okay. So now we got one that's got a little bit more going on. Um, I think I'm going to skip this one because uh, you have to leave early, and this is really the same thing. So. Right. Unless you really want to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to be looking at voltages. Um, and this is when we would use 
it would be advantageous to use KVL, right? It would be, yep. Um, so we can pick, uh, there's three possible loops, you know, inside this one, inside this one, and inside that one. Uh, it doesn't matter what direction you draw the loop. It's probably easiest if you do them the same direction every time, right. just to keep it uh, the same. So um, I'll do this one. And remember, when you're going into the negative side, you call it negative, and when you're going into the positive side, you call it positive. So the KVL equation here is minus V1 plus V2 plus V3. So basically, whatever you hit first, because I struggle with that on the homework, mm -hmm. whatever you hit first, that, that's what its sign is? No, you want to look at if it's labeled, you use the sign that it is. But if not, we would assume it's, it's going, we would just use positive to make it easier. Yeah, so like, let's say I had this. The other thing um, is that resistors are always going to be absorbing power. So uh, they're always positive. Right. So you don't have to worry about those. That's always going to be plus. So if I call that V1 and that V2, if I'm doing my loop around that way, then it's going to be plus for the resistor. So I'm going to have minus 10 because I come into the minus side. Plus V1, minus 5, plus V2, equals 0. Okay. Okay. Now, the way I would continue to solve this problem is I would say this current is I. It's all in series. Right. And so they all have the same current. And so V1 has to equal 3I. And V2 has to equal 4I. Of course. And now I can change this to all have one variable. So negative 10 plus 3i minus 5 plus 4i equals 0. 7i equals 15i equals 15 sevenths amp. Yeah. Now, will she always label the voltage sources? The voltage sources will almost certainly be labeled unless their question was specifically about that. Right. Okay, and then current sources, um, this is going to be the positive side and this is going to be a negative side. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, because I, I, that, that also threw me. The current sources can throw you. Yeah. Yeah. So currents are, currents go from positive to negative. They go from high voltage to low voltage with the single exception of when you're going through a voltage source. And notice here our current is going from lower voltage to high voltage, but that's because that's the whole point of the voltage source right. is to increase the voltage. Of course, right. Otherwise, anytime you see a current, if it's a positive current, it's going from high voltage to low voltage. Right. Okay. Okay? So when you have a current source, the current is necessarily running in this direction so this has to be plus and this has to be minus. Of course, right. Okay, so where were we? I was saying, I was saying that. And then I only know V2. So I have minus V1 plus 10 plus V3 equals zero. Okay, so I need another equation. So why don't you give me another equation? It would be minus V3 plus V4 plus V5 equals zero. All right, and then we have minus 10 plus 10. Oh, we should have started with that one. Plus V5 equals 0. Is that right? Yep. So V5 equals 0. And don't be too alarmed as I just was. If you yeah. get a 0 answer, yeah, that, it can happen. Yeah, that was, yeah. Yep. I was. It, it can happen. On my 
first on my circuits test my very first circuits test he had this very complicated circuit drawn you know all this stuff and he had it labeled zero ohms and i'm like what's the point of that and i mean right, it's yeah. just it, it was nothing it just didn't mean anything but it can be there right. um and also, of course, you can get negative voltages and negative currents, and there's no problem there. So V5 is zero, so we got that. Uh, so that's that one. And now we need V1. Okay, so it looks like we need to do something. Oh, no, we know V3. We know V3. Right, so. Yeah. V1 plus 10 plus 10 equals zero. Negative V1 equals negative 20, and V1 equals 20 volts. Don't forget your units. I, all these years, I still forget units, and then that's not good. I'm going to switch to some of the harder ones. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's, let's do this one. Okay. So this is an example of a kind of circuit that you'll see later in the course where you don't really care about the rest of the circuit. The rest of the circuit is doing something, but that's really not important. Um, you only need to know about this part. But what you do need to know about this circuit is what is the voltage across here. And you have to remember always that voltage is really talking about voltage differences. When we have a circuit like this, we can label a ground and say that's zero. And then we can say, let's see, where's the one we just did? So, okay, so like the ground would just be saying that's zero, and then whatever on the other side of it, the difference across that is the volt. Right. So if I put this as ground, then this is all zero here. And V1 was 20. So that means this, I'm going to label that as 20 volts. V2 is 10 volts. What that means is going from the plus to the minus, you lose 10 volts. So it is 10 right here, but not because of that. It's because 20 minus 10 is 10. Right. And then V4 is 10 volts. Um, and that means that this side has to be 10 volts less than this side which means this side has to be zero. Oh, wow. Which matches up with what we knew about right. V5. So it, the ground doesn't matter. The ground doesn't matter when you're dealing with voltage differences. We use the ground as our starting place. We right. say this is zero. And if this is zero, we call that 20. Okay. And we could have also said, once we said this was zero, we could have said this is zero. Because we knew that V5 was zero volts. Right. Okay. All right. So, um, let me see how I did this. I did. Okay, so I am make this ground. Um, and I'm going to label this as VX. That means that everything here relative to ground is at the voltage Vx. Now, when I use Ohm's law, I encourage people to do Va minus Vb over R equals I. <coughs> so when you look at your current, this is the voltage where you start, this is the voltage where you end, and that's the resistance. If you happen to already know the voltage across that resistor, then that would be the number there. But we don't know that. Right. So VA is what I labeled VX, minus the voltage on the other side is zero, because I called that ground, over the resistance is 10. And that equals our current, which was given to be 5 amps. So Vx equals 5. So now I know that this is 5 volts. Okay. Now I can find Ix because I have the voltage here is 5 and the voltage here is 0. 
So I'm going to do the same thing I did here, but this time it's my current that's unknown. So the voltage on this side, so VA minus VB over R equals I. The voltage on this side is 5 minus the voltage on this side is 0 over 5 equals I, or I equals 1 amp. I actually equals 1 amp. Okay, so now um, let's take a look at this node here. And I'm going to call that current, I'm just going to call it I, A. Can you give me a KCL equation for that node? Um, it would be I, A equals one half, or 0.5 amps plus, or no, it would be, I believe it would come out to negative IA equals 0.5 amps plus I. Notice that all of these are coming out of this node. So IX is going that direction. This one half amp is going this direction. And the way I drew IA, I drew it in. It's also coming out. Oh, okay, right. So they would all just be added. I think I was trying to skip a step and solve it. Oh, I think you were. Yep. I th yes, you were. And yeah, I was, no, no, I was no. not. I, no, that's yeah. the way it should be done. <laughs> no, well, this is it. why you want to do it on a test to show right, all your work. And I agree, yeah. I was jumping ahead. <laughs> okay, and we found IX to be 1 plus 0.5. Uh, this is IA. IA plus 0 0.5 plus 1 equals 0, IA equals negative 1.5. So what that means is that going this direction, it's negative 1.5, so it's really going that direction. Right. And we're going to use this information to help us find Vx. So all of this bottom is ground, so it's all 0, so this side is 0. Oh, I should not have called this VX because we already had a VX. Yeah, I was confused. Yeah. I thought you were using it as an arbitrary um, value just to find out the rest of the circuit. Then we could use it to solve that. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah. I was, and that was a mistake. So I'm going to rename that VA because VX is definitely not that. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, if this is zero and the difference from here to here has to be VA, then I have VA right there. The voltage right here has to be VA. Right, and it would just be I, so negative 1.5 amps times four ohms. Uh. Kind of. You see, this is where you have to be careful that we look at the voltage on either side of the current. So the voltage on this side is five, minus the voltage on this side is VA over 4 equals IA. Oh, right. That's why I keep stressing this because this is where everybody, you get confused. You think, you want to just say V equals IR. Well, that's fine if you know that gives you, okay, I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Right, right. Okay, so... Um, 5 minus VA over 4 equals negative 1.5. 5 minus VA equals negative 6. Minus VA equals yep, negative 11, or VA equals 11 volts. Okay, now let's go back and look at this a different way. So we know, <coughs> we know that... This is 4 ohms, and we know the current across it is negative 1.5. So we know that um, this side is negative and this side is positive because it's a negative right. current. Of course, right. So we can say the voltage, V equals IR, uh, voltage equals negative 1.5 times 4 
and the voltage equals negative 6. Well, what does that mean? That means that the voltage drops by 6. By six um, Because that's, that's what this is consuming. Mm -hmm. So we would just then add it to this. Mm -hmm. I did something wrong there. Hold on. So we have this, we labeled this plus and minus. We know that this side has to be six more than this side. And this side is five, so that gives us 11 volts. Right. Okay. okay.